after you learn that you have MS, you may have asked, what can I do to treat it? There's broad consensus across the medical community that for people with relapsing forms of MS, early and ongoing treatment with an approved disease-modifying therapy is our best chance. Currently, we don't have a disease-modifying therapy approved for people with progressive MS who no longer have relapses or have never had a relapse. But we're all hopeful that researchers will find an effective treatment for progressive MS soon. In the meantime, there's a lot that people with progressive MS and their healthcare teams can do to manage the disease. Learn all you can about the available treatments and talk to your physicians about what is right for you. Up until 1993, when somebody with MS was diagnosed, we would say to them, well, you have multiple sclerosis and we can treat some symptoms, but other than that, this disease is gonna do what it wants. Now, in the 21st century, I have a whole armamentarium of drugs and treatments and strategies and a wealth of knowledge that I can share with people with MS to help them make the most of their lives. There are different types of disease-modifying therapies. Some of these medications are injections that people may take um, several times a week or less often. Some of the newer treatments are orals, and some are intravenous infusions, uh, which people may take once a month or a few times a year. These are medications that have been shown to decrease relapses, decrease inflammation, decrease the appearance of new areas of nerve damage on MRI. So these are treatments that actually get at the underpinnings of the disease. These drugs all have different mechanisms of action, they have different side effects, and so it's worth having a detailed discussion with your healthcare provider as to what will be the best drug for you. I had a while to take home that documentation and read it, ask her any questions that I had, and then make my own choice as to what type of medication that I wanted to take. And I opted to go with one of the shots that I felt was best suited to my lifestyle at that time. There isn't one best drug and there isn't a one size fits all. So I like to partner with the person who has MS and we try to come up with the medication that's going to be most appropriate for their type of MS and their lifestyle and um, their general medical condition. I will generally make a recommendation, so I may say, well, here are the choices, but I think you might do best with drug A or drug B. Oftentimes, um, people do come in, they're very overwhelmed by all the choices, all the options. Yes, listen to other people, but the first thing you have to do is be true to yourself. Listen to what you believe is the right thing for you. When Meg and I took home the information for all the injectable medication we went through and and read all the side effects, tried to figure out what would work. We ultimately went with the doctor's recommendation on what medication he, he preferred. Patients that start treatment at the onset of the disease will fare better long-term than those that wait for a while before they start medication. We're going to reduce the likelihood of the individual having more manifestations of the disease. So primarily, they're a, they are a preventative approach looking towards the future. We cannot undo the damage, we cannot cure MS, but we can certainly have a very significant impact in the course of the disease and alter that course in a positive way to maximize the function of patients and minimize any of the manifestations that can come from multiple sclerosis. An important element in deciding on a treatment is balancing the risk-benefit ratio. We know that the medications provide benefits, but we also know that they come with certain risks, potential side effects. So we decide on one initial therapy, but we're going to monitor the efficacy and safety of the drug, and if necessary, we will make changes down the road. Given the characteristics of the disease, how aggressive the disease is being, we might shift that balance of risk-benefit ratio and eventually decide that a given medication is best at that point in time because the disease requires that more aggressive approach to control it. Knowing the potential benefits of disease-modifying therapies is only one piece of the decision to start therapy. Knowing how people integrate treatment into their lives and how they overcome concerns and fears may help you make your decision. You know, sometimes therapists provide the person a place to talk about the pros and the cons, the fears, the consequences of not doing, um, of not doing this. How are you gonna feel if you don't try it? 
because I think that becomes a bigger issue. If, you know, three, four, five months, a year from now, and you didn't try it, how are you gonna be, how are you gonna feel? You gonna beat yourself up? My first injectable medication was a roller coaster. It was, it, the side effects were, were very difficult for me. Over time, I did notice that the side effects reduced quite a bit. In short, what I tell my patients is the reason for switching a drug is either you can't tolerate it, it isn't working, or something better comes along. I was taking an injectable, and I took it for about a year. And then the pill forms came out, and my neurologist felt like those were safe alternatives, so I started on one of the pills. They were so convenient, but then I started having side effects that I really couldn't tolerate. So I ended up going back to another injectable. And I feel like that they're fine for my lifestyle now. I had to go through a washout period before I could go on to the injectable medication. And during that washout period, I started having tremors in both hands and spasticity in my left leg and then also some in my left arm. And it dawned on me I really did need the medication. This is an ongoing process, so even between exacerbations, even when people are feeling well, if they're not on disease-modifying therapy, there's a good chance that the disease is active and they're accumulating nerve damage. With both injectable medications not slowing down my MS, the next step is an infusion to see if that will slow things down. The disease-modifying therapies um, decrease the immune system's ability to attack the nerves, but they don't treat symptoms. Symptom modification is very important to help people feel and function better. And so we address these symptoms generally with a combination of medications that may be useful, any rehabilitative strategies that we can employ, and we talk about lifestyle and wellness practices. MS affects not only a person's physical abilities, but it can impact their mood and also their thinking. Even at the very beginning, of the disease. I experience fatigue and depression, and I'm lucky to have medications to help support that. So I take an antidepressant daily to help me cope, as well as um, a medication to help me with my energy levels. Like any other symptom of MS, depression deserves to be treated, needs to be treated, so that you can get on with the rest of the business of your life. Current disease-modifying therapies do not cure MS and generally do not provide relief from symptoms. In fact, the effect of these medications on your disease may not be readily apparent, but research has shown many benefits for many people with relapsing forms of the disease. Taking ownership of our bodies and managing our health to live our best lives possible is the purpose of treatment. We want to preserve the health we have to prevent additional lesion damage and minimize progression.